Good afternoon. My name is Mary Ambrose Jurak, and this is an introductory video uh, lecture to introduce students at uh, McHenry County College to uh, the course materials for uh, business law or legal environment of business as we call it here and business 241 is the course title this is an uh, either an eight-week format or 16-week format a summary an overview and highlights of three years of law school now doesn't that sound fun in eight weeks uh, imagine but the course begins, as does law school, with the basic four classes and then proceeds to the second and third year curriculum, but merely in summary fashion. So students need not be concerned that they're expected to be able to practice law like Abraham Lincoln or other Illinois attorneys uh, by the time the course is finished. The purpose of my video here is to provide some introduction to our course objectives and some vernacular so that students feel at home with the legal system. Please note that you may also avail yourself of the many court dates that I post for extra credit to come and see if you're a visual learner the actual court process in play at the McHenry County Rolling Meadows Lake County Courthouses in the area. Uh, some vocabulary to start with. In the United States, we refer to licensed attorneys as, uh, as students who have gone through law school, that is three years, taken the bar exam and are actively practicing. If you are someone who merely attended law school or didn't take the bar exam or not practicing, we call those individuals lawyers. That's the distinction here. If you go to the British legal system, which is, is what our system is based upon, they separate attorneys by the vernacular of barristers. Those are the individuals that go into court and solicitors, those who have more of a commercial or corporate practice. So that distinction will be important as you're reading cases. Uh, other vocabulary, and there is, are quiz questions on this vocabulary. Uh, in order to discuss the various courses that we have, we oftentimes shortcut them and I also give extra credit to students for coming up with the definitions of, of where we got the shortcuts from. So for instance, contracts, which we spell C-O-N-T-R-A-C-T-S, is symbolized by a, the letter K for a Greek reason, shall we say. Um, uh, IP, which is intellectual property and is in week four, and IT, which is international trade, which is also in week four, are also two abbreviations. We talk about bankruptcy as BK, and we don't mean Burger King. And we talk about um, insurance, INS. We talk about administrative agencies as AA, uh, not standing for any other symbol. Uh, when you see a caption, and you can look at a caption of a case underneath uh, module one, just a sample litigation pleading. It will show you that the plaintiff's name is first, followed by a VS or a V, which is for verses, uh, and that means who you're opposing, and the second caption name in the caption is the defendant. We symbolize the plaintiff with a backwards P, and we symbolize the defendant with a, a delta, which I'm going to put on the board for you at this time. Uh, Difficult sometimes to find on Apple computers, but nonetheless extra credit if you do figure out how to do that. Also, when we put the symbol up for um, uh, copyright, it is a C inside of a circle in week four or an A. We also put up TM for trademark, uh, et cetera, in that week. Hopefully introducing these 10 abbreviatory symbols will help you uh, familiarize yourself and get through coursework more quickly. Uh, I also um, encourage you to go, when you're given an assignment in a certain topic area, to go to the government agency responsible for enforcing that law uh, for resources in writing your quick discussion forms or your memos. So if you've been given an employment law assignment, you would want to go to www.eeoc, that's the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission.gov. Similarly, you'll want to go to the United States Patent and Trademark Office and the United States Copyright Office.gov under these federally organized URLs. Those will give you oftentimes the definitions, the vocabulary words that you're looking for to complete your assignment. Um, Additionally, 
Uh, the OER has everything including the kitchen sink under each of the chapters. And you'll see like, for example, in contracts, I'll give you all eight of their chapters, but you will know if you use my lecture out notes that are online, you will also get the manufacturer's outlines that you do not need all of that material. There's a practice PDF quiz that you can take on each unit at, for practice, not graded, that will help you get ready for the graded 10 question quiz. And if you can do the PDF quiz and if you breeze through the notes, this is set up very similarly to the Cornell method that we teach here at MCC in MCC 101. You will have no trouble uh, answering the 10 graded questions for that unit. So do not look at all of the resource material that's been provided under each of the modules and go, I need to spend 15 hours learning and memorizing all this. My suggestion is using the Cornell method that you take the first step and skim or read those chapters, but do so with a handout that you will find that I've written on those chapters and my lecture notes sitting right there next to it so it will show you which sections to skip over and what to emphasize. For example, in contracts we talk about uh, the 10 uh, that we talk about six words that are integral to any valid contract and they all start with either the letter A or C and if you've read that hint that's in the announcements and you've read my lecture notes you won't be reading all eight chapters on contracts uh, you may find materials in there useful for your memo or your discussion forum but again you'll be able to breeze through the quizzes if you use this material so the Cornell method suggests that you read first you uh, record your notes, your own notes, and I would use my lecture notes uh, and outlines as backdrop for that. You revise those based on what quiz questions you were asked. You reduce those into a flashcard that you need on that chapter or a sheet of paper that you need on that chapter. You reflect upon them and there you've achieved the six R's under the Cornell method uh, with all the, the materials online. You will find also under module one that one of my former alumni students graciously, it says business ethics or business law terminology has typed out every vocabulary word that you need for either the eight or 16 week course. So again, if you use that as your guide, you're not learning everything that you need to know about the law of torts, the law of crimes. You only need to know the ones that I've specified, and then you need to only know the definitions that are provided for you here. Uh, in addition, you will find that with the assistance of Pete Lilly here at MCC, including this video lecture. We also have 45 minutes as if you weren't in class or if you didn't take the notes in class that you can watch at home at your leisure to summarize exactly what I think is germane and seminal in each of these weeks. Um, there is also um, uh, OER lecture materials uh, from the manufacturer online. If you start off this course looking at the front page of it online, you will see that we've put together uh, what we call here at MCC a library guide. What will you find in the business law library guide? Besides, you'll also find the relevant OER chapters and maybe some also from Anderson and Toomey's 23rd edition. You will find a reference to Black's Law Dictionary. That is the source of the definitions that your classmate your previous alumni classmate wrote up for the definitions. Uh, and probably you can find those same definitions on Google. You can probably find them also under um, a regular Merriam-Webster dictionary, but the Black Saw dictionary will be accurate for legal definitions. Further, you'll also sign re find reference to what we call the Blue Book Citation Form for lawyers. You don't have to use that much. In fact, what I do is offer extra credit for students who look up how to properly cite a movie using an MLA source book, how to properly cite a case, and those two or three ways of citation are all you really need out of that book. But if you uh, elaborate further than beyond those uh, uh, citations in your work assignments, perhaps that uh, blue book will be helpful for you. Additionally, the United States Constitution is germane to every assignment that we have. It is the federal law that governs, as you will know from our discussions on the other video about courts 
here in Illinois. The Illinois Constitution is also relevant, especially in the Drew Peterson case when we're talking about uh, whether or not his due process rights under criminal law were violated. When we talk about impeachment standards for President Trump, those will be found under the United States Constitution. So be sure and locate those two very important legal documents, learn how to cite them, and use them each week in your uh, case assignments. Finally, um, I would really encourage you to avail yourself of office hours. I'm going to be in the office uh, typically two or three hours before any time I'm teaching online and are on in person and I'm also online most every day three or four times a day for substantial chunks of time you are welcome to use my cell phone and contact me or show up at court or come to a124 and find me or book an appointment if your work schedule isn't convenient uh, but one thing you shouldn't do is be afraid of this class it will I assure you, as I tell many people, it will enhance your life. And I make a promise to people when I, they start this class that I hope that they will like the law and they will like lawyers better than when they started. I hope they realize that there are good and ethical people that, uh, that are out there practicing law and that, um, that the ethics rules in Illinois for attorneys as well as the national ones also protect you from those lawyers who are not ethical. We talk about learning how to check up on lawyers that you might hire under the Attorney Registration and Discipline site, known, better known as the ARDC, and how we learn how to uh, contract for reasonable fees with attorneys, which is an ethical rule in Illinois, and how to uh, judge whether or not a rate that you're being charged for an attorney in a locale is a reasonable rate. I think all three of these things will help you uh, in the future, which is also part of my course objectives, that you learn how to assess ethical conduct from attorneys, learn how to measure it, and, and learn how to assure that the people that you contract with provide you such ethical con conduct. Um, again, it takes a lifetime to build a reputation and it takes a few seconds to blow it. I encourage you to use these instructions that I've just given you as uh, a way to present your best work in our class. Also, please review the college's policy on plagiarism and other forms of academic dishonesty that is also contained in our syllabus. Of course, when it's a class that I'm teaching about ethics in week two and I'm teaching intellectual property in week four, the standards that are in this class are asked to be to adhere to and, and, and they, are, they are definitely um, important for your successful performance in Business 241. Again, if I can provide you any other assistance in walking through what is an awful lot of material to get yourself started, once you get through the first week, you'll be fine. I give two writing assignments, one where you just show me that you can write about a memo about yourself and always using what MCC's business department considers its professional heading to, from, Ray, and the date. But additionally, I'd ask that you take a swat at writing the movie memo where you pick your favorite legal movie. It doesn't matter if it's a To Kill a Mockingbird, Legally Blonde, My Cousin Vinny, but you show me that you understand who the plaintiff, the defendant, the jury, the prosecutor, uh, all those players are in, in a fictitious case and in a movie setting, and then I will know that you're ready to move on and write um, in week two about uh, the more formal cases that we're studying in this class. Again, welcome to Business 241, and please seek me out. I, I want everyone to love this material as much as I do, and I make myself available for any questions or assistance that you need. Mm -hmm.